Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be changing the steering rack on a Chevy Uplander. It's a 2008. So you're going to want to jack up the vehicle. And the reason we're changing it Whoa. is because it's pouring fluid out of the inner yeah. seal. You can see it you right there that. coming out of the inner tie rod and boot. A quick summary of the job is you're going to want to disconnect the outer tie rod ends and we're going to want to take the steering shaft coupler off and slide that up and out of the way. And the main bolts, there's two holding in the rack, those are going to have to come out. And then there's two lines, two 18 mil lines that you're going to need to take out. So let's get started. Pull the cotter pin out. So you want to straighten it and then grab a hold of it. See if these vice grips will do the job. There she is. Oh, that wasn't very tight. And the reason we're being careful with these tie rod ends is because we're not replacing them. If you're replacing them, you can stick a fork in there and just pound it and you won't worry about wrecking the rubber. But because we're using them again okay now we're going to use the, the puller on this side and you leave the nut on so it doesn't pop off and come flying at you so the tire end doesn't hit anything so make sure that the got good surface area there there alrighty I'm going to use this stinky little wrench for some reason, because that's what's nearby. Whoa! Look at that. Yeah, this tool will come flying off too. So that was it releasing. So I have the wheels turned just because it's easier to see for the camera, but you can do this in the straight ahead position as well. Um, you are going to want it to be in the straight ahead position later on when you take off take the off. steering coupler. All the way back on just a little bit. This one's really stiff. All right. But I don't have any special tools. Often you can strike here, not on the tire end, but on the knuckle, and it'll pop. Like that. If you're just hitting the knuckle, it's not going to be a problem. So you can get it out, even with basic tools. Okay, get the rubber out of the way. See that one there. Okay, so twice I thought I was ready to tie off the steering, but it turned out that it really helped to rotate the shaft around so that the bolt would be on this side, and it's an 11 millimeter socket, really weird. Um, but anyway, 11 millimeter, and I can get at it from this side now because it's when it's straight ahead it's on the opposite end and so now I can break it loose and once I get that loose I know I can get it out then I can put it back to the straight position before taking the coupler off before taking it off of the rack I need to make sure it's straight so make sure your wheels are straight and then I like to tie off the steering wheel so that it can't go spinning because if you have the shaft disconnected from the rack and you were to spin this wheel you could actually break the clock spring because it should only rotate a certain amount to the right and to the left so you want to make sure you keep your steering wheel straight okay I rotated it back to straight now that I had it loose I can take this one out here easily that's the pinch bolt. 
and slide up there. So it is no longer connected. Put the rack. You can put paint on it too, but it has a key, so it only slides on one way. I'm gonna move it right out of the way. Yeah, because it's flat on the sides. It's flat on the sides up here. It's a little bit better of a view. All right, so you gotta cut that one. The line's going in. Some of the lines are connected to the rack itself. Go from rack to rack so you don't have to take those out. Okay, then it's an 18 to break that fitting loose. Spin it out. You're gonna get a shot of power steering fluid. So get ready to catch that. Oh, I'm not ready. I am not ready with my little yogurt container. <laughs> Get a bigger one. Then you can move this one out of the way and that'll let you access the one behind it. With an 18 again. Get that one out of the way. And I think we're just left to our main bolt. So I'm going to we'll give these a quick clean. Get it all in the camera. Okay, so it's an 18 on both sides. I do not have much room here, but I can at least break it loose with the wrench, and I got one holding it on this side too. Yeah, you know what, I don't have to go backwards with this because I can just take the nut off the other side, so no worries there. Oh, <laughs> flexi head. Slow down, slow down. Wow, that stabilizer bar is going to be in the way a little bit to get the full exit. Okay, there you go. Pull down, put your weight on it, puff. Little lube on the threads will help. There she is. Okay. A little bit of a workout. That's good. Didn't go for a run today. It's going to be my exercise. Oh, look at that. The whole thing's loose now. Officially out. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. So count how many turns it takes to remove the outer tie rod ends, 
and write that down so that when you install them on the new rack, you can put them on the same amount of turns. That'll get you close to what the alignment is so you can limp it over to the alignment shop. Um, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to need an alignment even if you do that. And if you don't, well, say goodbye to your tires and to your steering. So, <laughs> yeah, get an alignment, um, but doing that will help you get it closer. Sixteen. Sixteen on this one. You can slide a wrench in these, but vice grips are good because it this type goes flat and you can get it squash it in there really good so you don't have any slippage. Okay, we got the new rack here. So in the destructions, it says it is necessary to remove the plastic collar from the old rack and put it on the new one and that's this piece right here that so that the boot goes over top you need the collar there so that you can put your boot onto there okay we got the nuts on we're going to leave the outer tie rod ends off until we put it in the vehicle also comes with two cotter pins and two o-rings And a new bushing should go right there. Look at this rusty thing they send me in the package. Put it in a plastic bag at least, right? So it looks remanufactured, but that's crazy. At least the rest of this is shiny for now. Just paint it over the rust. We'll see how long it lasts. It's hit and miss with these rebuilt parts. All right, so we gotta press this together. So remove and install it from the driver's side wheel well here. All right, we're close. So when removing and installing the rack, the passenger side mount has a plate in front, so you have to kind of wiggle the rack a little more to the passenger right. side and push it up and down to get it to fall into that mount, that mount. All right, then we need to get the holes to line up, slide the bolts back in, which if you remember, we had to kind of pull down on the sway bar. And I'm gonna see if it's all lined up, if they gave us this in the straight ahead position where we have the coupler now, it should slide right in, it should slide right into the rack up there. on the other side. Then, torque it to factory specs, whatever that is, seeing as I no longer have Identifix. Identifix was so good, man, I need it again, but hopefully I can Get a subscription if this YouTube thing takes off. I'll help pay for it. As a volunteer, it was just a little too much. Pay every month. Click. <laughs> I know you're gonna you're gonna be mad. Don't be mad. Okay, good. Making sure that wheel is straight. And I thread it on the tie rod end a bit. 
to see and just confirm we are in the right alignment that coupler did go on so now I'm going to want to rotate it around to make it accessible to tighten that bolt so we can pop this off Be safe I'm just gonna put a dab of some blue Loctite on there probably be fine without it but there was some factory white it looks like but either way blue is okay to use on pretty much anything make sure it's all the way down and tighten it up okay then you can pull the rubber back over and into this plastic ring that you took from the old one. Get that dirt off of there. Pop off the old O-ring. Pop on a new O-ring. We'll do that to the other line, which would have been easier to do before I put the rack in the way. We'll get new O-rings on them. You can put a little shot of power steering fluid on it to lubricate it and then with the 18 mil wrench we can put them in tighten up the back one first and then we can do the front one it's nice to have a little stubby wrench in this situation not much space stubby gets right in there Here. I'm just gonna add a dab of Loctite. Well, it was a little more than a dab, but on this tie rod end because it does not have the key. It's a it's a lock washer. They kind of only lock once, so the Loctite will take care of that. Keep pressure down. Get it up there. This one, from what I found online, I think it said about 36 pounds, so it should be good around 40. Okay, and the jam nut, I'll just tighten that up. Cut her pin back in, fold it over. Cut off extra. Snug the jam nut into the tie rod end. We're good to go. Put the wheels back on and bring it for an alignment. Thank you for watching, guys. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing. It would really help me in growing the channel. And I'm going to have many more videos to come and also some cool projects and builds hopefully in the future. So I think you'll really want to check that out. I'll see you next time.